So she is allowed today double the number of false notes, wrong notes, without any penalty. So we wish you well. Many of you will know Brian Beisel came from this congregation. He is currently in quarantine, he and his family. They have an adopted son, Timmy, who went to daycare, and there one of the staff members has COVID, and so all of the children and their families have now been quarantined. He is the pastor at Trinity Valley U, where I was once the pastor, and also in Llewellyn, Freedom's Llewellyn. Yesterday, I had a funeral, the woman's name, Jacqueline Marquette. I did not expect that any of you knew her. I did not know her, sorry to say. She was in her 90s, having been born in 1927. Tim Sullivan's wife's aunt's aunt. That makes sense. So the great aunt of Tim Sullivan's wife. Mr. Sullivan is one of the funeral directors here in town. Her funeral was an outdoor funeral only on uh, yesterday. Jacqueline Marquette, her career was as a church secretary. So. And then another COVID story I would tell you. This comes from Dr. Jane Appleby. Chief Medical Officer for Methodist Healthcare in San Antonio, Texas. You may have seen this as well. They had a patient who had gone to a COVID party whereby one person who has tested positive for COVID throws a party and other people come to see what happens, if anything. To see if the virus is real and if anyone gets infected. Well, this 30-year-old patient at the Methodist Hospital in San Antonio did get it and died. And before dying, he said, quote, I think I made a mistake. I thought this was a hoax, but it's not. This meaning COVID. So it's a sad story of how behavior leads, in some cases, Death. So that is, oh, and I was going to say about this funeral I had yesterday, the woman died back in March, but as is often the case now, funerals are being delayed because they couldn't be held in a normal way, and that's why the funeral was yesterday, even though the person died in March and the funeral was simply an outdoor service at the grave. So, adjustments all over the place. That's what I have to share with you. Is there anything else? And our first hymn is number 250.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend this gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Spirit of God dwells in you. 
Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through His Spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the second reading. Chapter of Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on the town of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. I've had mixed success this year. On the one hand, I planted squash. Almost every single seed germinated and the stalks grew big quickly. Although those squash plants are now surrounded by little weeds, the squash tower above the weeds and will survive, no doubt about it. And this week I hope to get out some dry day and pull the weeds. Come September, there should be squash. But the eggplants, not so much. The seeds arrive late from the seed company, well beyond the date on which I should have started the plants indoors. So I planted the seeds directly in the garden, putting a toothpick by each seed so I know without a doubt which would be the baby eggplant plants. Alas, birds came and collected the toothpicks. Weeds grew up as quickly as the eggplants, if the eggplants germinated at all. Now the weeds are large and the eggplants are nowhere to be seen. Finally, I also planted some rolls of seeds, mainly to see what would happen. That is, you can buy strips in which seeds are embedded, stretch out these rolls on the ground, they come rolled up like a ball, but stretch them out on the ground, cover them slightly with ground, and water them, and up on the seeds. And they did. It worked. Not only 
that. I bought the rolls of seeds from a company that soon will reward me $7,000 a week for the rest of my life. I was actually expecting only $5,000 a week, but that contest ended on June 30th, and I didn't win. But now I'm in for seven. I'll be sure to let you know when I win, and you will enjoy the new air conditioning here at church when I do win. At uh, Buck Run, I promised them an elevator, but the organist wanted an organ instead. I said, no, they get an elevator. Huh. Like it or not. And you get air conditioning. Like it or not. If I get 7000 a week. Planting seeds can bring you all kinds of wonderful harvests or nothing at all. When you plant the seeds, you don't really know what you will get. I remember well a farmer friend of mine telling me that he was giving up on farming, giving up on it as his main occupation because the results were so hit or miss. A few dry years in a row meant no income. He experienced that, and it wasn't fun. His new job, working for the state as part of a road crew, was more dependent. Which would you rather have? A guaranteed, dependable outcome, or an unknown outcome that could be anywhere from amazingly good to depressingly bad? In today's Gospel reading, we heard Jesus tell a story about a person who sowed seeds, scattering them all over the place. Some seeds fell on the hard packed earth, lay exposed, and were quickly eaten by the earth. Some seeds fell in areas too full of rocks and couldn't survive in the shallow soil. Some seeds fell in areas already full of other plants, thorns, and died out. Only some of the seeds ended up in good soil, but they did amazingly well. One seed could produce 30, 60, or even 100 new seeds. What is this story? It is a story of encouragement. Don't give up. Keep at it. Maybe not everything will turn out well, not every seed will produce a harvest, but there will be success. So it is in the kingdom of God. There will be failure at times, but there will also be success. Not everyone who hears God's word and comes to the doors of the church will grow in faith and service. But some people, in at least some people, the Word of God will take hold and they will be blessed and will become a blessing to others. That is to say, I've had mixed success in my many years of being a pastor. Just like I've had mixed results with the seeds in my garden. Some people with whom I spend a lot of time and effort are nowhere to be seen when it comes to church and or a life of faith. Discouraging. While other people carry on beautifully. It's not me or everyone would be the same or at least close to being the same. There must be other influences at work other factors to account for the fact that some people respond and some people do not. Should I be depressed by those drifting away? Or should I be encouraged by those who grow in faith? In 
And should I take any of it personally? After all, I may indeed have been sowing seeds, but so did other people, other pastors, parents, grandparents, Sunday school teachers, fellow church members. All of them were teaching lessons and setting examples also. I can't take all of the credit or all of the blame, and neither can you. All we know is that in some cases at least, there is a wonderful, amazing harvest. We hope that makes up for the disappointing results in other cases. Consider Paris, a college student who serves on the Synod Council of our Synod. I confirmed her. She was a Sunday school teacher for several years. Already when she was in middle school, she represented our congregation on the board of the Schuylkill Haven Council of Churches and gave reports to our congregation council. But I was far from being the only person sowing seeds in her life. Her parents set the foundation. All I did was invite her to take on new responsibilities and provide her instruction. On the other hand, consider Miss X. She came to catechetical class only a couple times and dropped out. Unlike Harrison, her parents did nothing except tell her to go for about a month, and then they gave up. They themselves had not set any example of faith for her from little on up. And, we, and when she became incorrigible, unwilling to do almost anything, they quit trying. Mixed results. We see them in churches, in families, in communities. But you never know. One fellow I once destroyed looked like he was going to destroy his life big time. Wasted seed. He was involved with drugs. He was actually guilty of armed robbery. But now you will find him to be the most serious Christian in his entire family, someone who tries to help other young people do the right thing, someone frequently in church. The story of Jesus Christ crucified and risen still has the power to change lives. The seed is good. May it grow well in all of our lives. It is guaranteed to give excellent results, not everywhere, but in enough lives to give us all hope. Amen.
God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Paul in the unity with one another in the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God. Praying God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God. Abide in God. Care for all who are in need, including Orville, Marguerite, Michael, and others we may silently in our hearts. For those who are doubting and renewed faith, for those who are worried, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God. Renewing God, revive your, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministry and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, of those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.